Okay, Kyle is one of those lucky people who was born and raised in Petoskey. He graduated from Alma College in 2005, where he also played college soccer as their four-year starting varsity goalkeeper. After playing and even during summer breaks, Kyle coached for the local soccer club and eventually rose to club director of the Petoskey Youth Soccer Association. He held that position from 2014 to 2018. After a year away from coaching, Kyle joined two other local families, Jeff and Jill Suffolk and Eric and Rebecca Mancini, to create the Petoskey Fieldhouse. In addition to being a part of a part owner, he's responsible for the in-house soccer program called Northern Michigan Elite. Away from Petoskey Fieldhouse, Kyle is a full-time associate broker for Kid Levy Real Estate, where he's worked for the last 13 years. He and his wife, Beth, have three young children, and they're committed to raising their kids in our great community while making Petoskey Fieldhouse a valuable asset to the other families in the area. So Kyle Lieberman, we're excited to hear about Petoskey Fieldhouse. Thanks for being here. Thanks for having me. Um, and I know you uh, mentioned uh, be sensitive to the timing of 10 to 15 minute presentation. Last night I was told to go 30 and I went 50. So you guys play me off with music or something if you have to. So, um, but I do appreciate everybody making time um, to give us a few minutes to just tell you a little bit about what we've done here at Petoskey Fieldhouse. Um, we're just a little over a year old, which uh, compounded with what the year was in 2020. It's been a little bit of a roller coaster getting this off the ground, but I wanted to, just take a, a few minutes to tell you about what we've done here, what our vision is for the future, and then ultimately answer any questions you have about kind of what we're trying to do here over the long term. So um, as Diane mentioned, uh, myself, and I, I mistakenly omitted in those details, my wife, who's, who's very active in this as well, um, Beth, and then uh, the Suffolk and Mancini's, two other local families, got together early uh, 2020 and purchased what was at one point the Munchkin Manor or Little Learner's Daycare. So if anybody's familiar with the corner of Atkins and Cedar Valley, a uh, large steel building that uh, we retrofit from what was a heavily partitioned um, preschool and, and daycare into what is now the Petoskey Fieldhouse. And what I'll try to do as I as I move on in this is move a little bit with my computer to show you uh, the space a little bit. We don't have every, in, we have some inflatable attractions that I have down right now because honestly they're a little bit loud and I don't, I don't think you guys want to hear the blowers rolling uh, through your computer screens, but you'll get a sense of the space. Um, so we closed on this January 31st of last year, kind of hit the ground running as fast as we could. And within four weeks had our uh, turf side, which is behind me, had the turf laid walls built to where we could at least host some sporting events last weekend of February last year. So which was really exciting because our, our vision was to start creating some programming there that would help fund our additional build outs. And of course, about three weeks after that COVID hit and we shut our doors for a few months. So we, we had a decision to make at that point on whether we just kind of took a break, waited for the, the dust to clear, so to speak, and, and resume activities, or if we were just gonna keep plowing ahead, building this the way we envisioned it with the trust that once we have a chance to be open to the public, that the, the consumer would follow. And that, that's the path we took. So it was, uh, it was an exciting year uh, following that. If, if you build it, they will come mindset. Um, we've, we've gotten this, I'd say 95% to what our long-term vision is. We've got some additional uh, concepts that we're, we're building going forward, but um, we have a 12,000 square foot facility. And to start with, I'm just gonna try to do a little bit of a 360 tour. So this is looking through our parent lounge out onto our soccer field, which is about 6,000 square feet. Um, We've, we've had a really robust soccer program, which as Diane mentioned in her introduction, I've uh, sort of taken the lead on. This is the rest of our lounge. Uh, we have a coinless arcade set up over here. So when uh, visitors pay their, their admission fee, there, there's no additional charge once you're in here, unless you use the concession stand. Um, the, that's one of our inflatables. It's down right now for your listening pleasure. Rock climbing wall, inflatables, ping pong, uh, and then our concession area behind me as well. So that gets you 90% of the tour. Behind this gray wall right here is our fitness studio, which I'll walk to in a little bit and uh, give you a little sense on that. And actually, I don't know if anyone saw movement in the background uh, when when you were talking earlier, but we just finished our, our 7 a.m. class. We have another one that comes in at eight. I'm not sure if they're gonna use the studio or go out onto the turf, but 
Um, the basic model we tried to follow here, the basic philosophy was to offer something for everyone in Northern Michigan. I think we're all aware, especially this time of year, the, the recreating opportunities can be a little bit limited. Even the skiers and the hardcore snowbirds are kind of coming out of that season. And we have a transition through the mud season, so to speak, before we get up to summer. So um, as, as Diane mentioned, I'm a father of a five, a three year old and a 10 month old. So I can tell you, anything that gets us active and out of the house is a positive and that's not a unique sentiment to us so we've we've been really blessed and with the amount of positive feedback from local families who are coming taking advantage of the of the programming we have here we have sort of three main income streams or three main uh, operations one as she mentions the northern michigan elite program which i run and that's soccer from as long, young as two and a half years old with our little kicker saturday morning program all the way up to adult leagues, which I've played in myself. So we were trying to co cover a wide gambit of um, playing opportunities there. What's different versus PYSA, for example, where, as you mentioned, I coached and played for years. That's a dedicated club with teams and go and play in leagues. And what we tried to create here is an opportunity for kids, regardless of the school district, regardless of the club affiliation, if they want to get extra training or they want a chance to improve, they're not restricted from attending or participating just on the basis of their hometown or their club affiliation. So what was really great is this winter, we had players coming as far as Grayling, Gaylord, Sheboygan coming up for our sessions. They were spending more time in the car to get here than they were on the field, which I thought was a really nice testament to, to the programming we were offering. Uh, Jill Suffolk, one of the partners, is runs our fitness studio, home fitness community. We've actually got close to 100 members there already, which is amazing. We have over 100 participants in our, our winter soccer program, and we just opened registration for the spring, and we're going to blow by our winter numbers. It's, it's clear already. Um, and then we also have our third leg, which is sort of just the general membership. We're open noon daily, and kids are available to just uh, hop in anytime and hop on our inflatables play whenever we're open. The only restriction is if I've got a soccer practice going, we kind of keep kids on the non turf side. But just on that model, we have already over 200 members, which we essentially didn't get to start offering that membership until January of this year. Um, the biggest challenge we faced getting off the ground, very honestly, is I think a normal business like this, you you build your model, you, you build your marketing and you hit the ground running. Well, it was really hard in COVID to yell to the world, we've got a spot for a bunch of kids to run around and play. Um, it wasn't uh, a particularly COVID compliant uh, business operation out of the gate. So we were, we were hit pretty hard. And the second part of that is uh, we made the mistake of starting a business in 2020, which renders you ineligible for all of this great federal money you keep hearing about. So we weren't eligible for PPP loans, EIDL grants, anything like that. We've 100% uh, built this on, on customers, sponsors, um, free market. There's, there's been no aid available to us. So um, we're, we're really proud of that because of the amount of success uh, we've been able to have in a short time. But it was definitely not the roadmap we would have laid out for how to get this thing off the ground when we closed January 31st. What's funny is the day we closed is in all those federal uh, programs, the, the quote unquote date of disaster January 31st. So apparently we coincided with the start of the, of the plague very literally. So um, try not to take that personally. Um, so it, it's been a, an amazing project. The feedback's been overwhelming. The coverage, I, I don't know some of you, if you've uh, come across us with a news review, we've been covered a number of times. We've been featured on 9 and 10's Michigan in the morning uh, before their, their 4 o'clock show. Uh, 7 and 4 had us on their 6 o'clock news. Um, we're, we're getting a tremendous amount of attention, which is exciting. I think uh, the biggest challenge we've had and the biggest um, need for our business that we're trying to satiate now is making up for that. You know, the, the notion you only get a sec, uh, you don't get a second chance at first impression. That's a little bit of the challenge we have is our first year, we had to sort of slink through the shadows, slowly open, can only open at this capacity, can only <laughs> let so many folks in, have to keep them apart. My soccer programming, I, I was coning off squares that kids had to stay in and having to have them work with buckets and hula hoops and all that because they couldn't play with each other. Um, so that was a little bit of a challenge. So now we're not all the way back to normal, but we're a heck of a lot closer than we were. And now our facility is ready to host it. So that's, that's kind of where we're at now is, is trying to sort of shout from the mountaintops. We're here as we're inching towards normal. We hope folks get a chance to come check us out and 
see what we're doing. But the, the feedback's been amazing. We're, we're really humbled by it, the amount of uh, businesses. I don't know how well that comes through on camera, but you can see our walls and some of it's hidden by the Ninja Courses, all uh, sponsors, biz local businesses who have stepped up to kind of put their name behind this project. And we've been incredibly grateful for them because they went a long way to smoothing out some of those rough patches for us in this first year. So um, rather than go on a monologue, which I'm prone to, I'd rather turn it over to questions from here and, and see what additional insights I can offer. The one thing I did want to say though, before I forget is Grace, you gave us the background on your name. I just want you to know my oldest daughter's name is Grace. And in addition to that, I married a woman named Beth and my sister's name is Bethany, who I called Beth all growing up. So I have a, a few overlaps with you. So, so with that, I'll take any questions you have. Everybody just remember to unmute yourself when you ask a question. Hi, I'm John Marshall, how are you? How do you or do you work in conjunction with your soccer training with PYSA? How are, how are those two groups working together, if at all? It's a really good question, because actually that board meeting that I presented to last night was PYSA's first in-person board meeting uh, in a year, which we hosted right here at the Fieldhouse. Um, you know, there are... Our priority has been to to be a resource for all clubs in northern Michigan. And so that was part of the conversation last night, which was a really positive one, is we want to be a resource for PYSA, just same as Charlevoix, Harbor Springs, et cetera, for um, I think we solve a couple challenges. One is giving kids the opportunity to train outside of just the normal season. What's tough about northern Michigan athletes and for PYSA athletes is you're sort of waiting for the weather to cooperate. You want to play, but it's not available yet. Um, we're able to, to solve that now with year round training. But what we made clear and what our conversation with PYSA last night was, is we want to help you. But part of what we help you is also lifting athletes in Harbor Springs, Charlevoix, Gaylord, Grayling, et cetera. Because I will tell you one of the greatest challenges that Northern Michigan soccer faces, that PYSA faces, and I felt this firsthand for years is, you get to a certain point in your development and if you want to play a quality game you're driving 200 miles downstate to do so and one of the things that i'm really passionate about is can we elevate the game and the athletes in this area enough that you can stay in a 50 mile radius and play a full robust competitive league so our goal is to to lift the whole area not just one specific club hey kyle how you been hey good how are you good hey I missed you. you. You talked about three revenue streams for the for the program: the Northern Michigan Elite Soccer Program, plus just a general membership for you know kids to come in and play and that kind of thing. I missed the middle one. What was? Oh, the sure. Our, our fitness studio, which uh, is, I'll I'll try and peek over there. I know there's a couple people coming in right now to get ready to work out, so I don't want to go put a camera right in their face just yet. <laughs> but um, but our fitness studio, which is on the other side of that gray wall. Um, and then they're likely gonna go out and do their workout on the turf. But so that's uh, fitness classes, high intensity interval training, TRX, yoga, that sort of thing. And um, we're, we're up to close to hundred members on that already. Okay. Kyle, something you, you didn't mention, um, well, two things. And one, I, I think that I read about, space can also be rented for kids' birthday parties. Yeah, yep, so we, we offer birthday packages sort of in conjunction with our public hours. So we don't dedicate the space exclusive to your birthday, meaning you don't shut the place down. But what we do offer is birthday packages. The lounge I'm sitting in right now, we offer a little service area there for pizza, um, birthday cake, et cetera. We set up a little service area here. And then you get one hour with your group of exclusive time on the turf, which um, some of the things that I don't have out right now, but I, I trust anyone who's seen some of our marketing materials, the bubble soccer, where kids get in these giant bubbles and crash into each other. We've got Nerf tag with Nerf guns and obstacles that they can play down to soccer, wiffle ball, football. We try to customize it to what that particular customer's interest in. We've, we've had a really robust uh, birthday business here, especially here in March and April, where again, I think people are getting a little more comfortable with those mixed group settings. So some of that's just following the trend of COVID to be able to do. Great, and and if people are interested in learning more about the, 
the fitness classes and that kind of thing. You have a website. Can you share that with us? Yeah, PetoskeyFieldhouse.com is, is, uh, has the vast majority of our programming and details on what we offer. The thing we stay the most current on is our social media platform, which our Facebook's updated basically daily. Um, that's that's the first spot I would check and on our website we do our best to keep up with but we so much is coming so fast and rules change so fast that we're it's a lot easier to throw a Facebook post up than go build the back end of a website so sometimes we're more current on our, our social media than the website so I definitely encourage you to check us out on Facebook as well one of the things that we've tried to be diligent about doing that will be coming up again on Thursday too is we do a thank you Thursday I mentioned all the um, sponsors that have stepped up and helped us. And so we try every Thursday, we've had a couple of weeks where there's conflicts, but every Thursday to acknowledge one of those uh, third parties that stepped up and been an asset for us. So one of the things we're really trying to make a backbone of what we do is gratitude to the community. Thank you for being a sponsor. Thank you for being a vendor that helps make this possible. Thank you for just being a customer who comes to see us because it's especially given the year we just went out of that we're, we are acutely aware of how reliant we are on the community's goodwill. So um, we're just, we try to be as grateful of a business as, as anything, so. Great. I'm kind of past the point of having uh, children to participate in this kind of stuff, but I, I know when, when our kids were growing up to have somewhere like this that the kids could be inside and, and be doing something other than sitting there with a Game Boy in their hand or something was yeah. fantastic. So I'm really excited to have this here and um, have you working with PYSA to, to possibly help that program grow because people will be more interested in the sport having someone else to do it. So thank you very much. You bet. Thank you. And and I would encourage anybody who, if, if they just have a passing interest, want to poke their head in, we're, like I said, we're open noon daily. And so you want to come in and just get a firsthand sense of what we have here. Um, obviously the soccer is something I play a big role in, but we're, we're bigger than just a soccer program. We have a, uh, if anybody's familiar with the Northern Michigan Panthers, the semi-pro football team that's been trying to get off the ground here in Petoskey, they are here every Sunday morning for their practices. Um, we have a pickleball group that'll be coming in at 10 o'clock um, from Birchwood. So we have a pretty diverse uh, customer base. So we really are offering something to everyone. Thank you, Kyle. Uh, Sarah is on route to uh, uh, school with Amelia. So she asked me to close the meeting and I'd like to uh, thank you, Kyle, for that great 